So Brandon here, and this video is going to be a little bit different. It's pretty much just a mid-season update, right? So it's like some clutches we have that have just hatched out, some clutches that we have that are coming that I'm really excited for, a show that we have coming up, and I actually want a little bit of feedback for an upcoming video that I'm going to be working on. So let's talk about the show. So we have a show coming up. It's called the Southeast Reptile Expo, and it's put on by Bob Vu. And, uh, you know, Morph Market, you know, Darian, he sponsors it. Um, it's down in Georgia. Um, that is September 14th and 15th, 15th and 16th. One of those, that weekend of September. So we're going to be down there. Um, we're going to have some ball pythons, some blood pythons, and I might even bring a couple of boas for a buddy of mine. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, we haven't done a show in a while. The local shows kind of suck. I'm just not a big fan of them. Um, I haven't really done very well, and I don't know if that's just because I will spend time talking to everybody, and then I have people that I feel like have no interest in reptiles. They're there because their kid brought them or whatever, and it's more of like an opportunity to educate, and then I can physically see people like looking like they're interested, but I don't wanna cut them off. It's a whole weird thing. Um, either way, that's neither here nor there. Either way, looking forward to the show. Um, we're going to be right next to Matt. Um, KBM, KMB. I always mix up his initials. I don't know why. Uh, but we're going to be right next to him, hanging out and really looking forward to it. Um, you know, probably just do a couple things out in Georgia too, like check out the aquarium or whatever. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you like to, there's going to be a link down in the description for that show. I want to say there's like a percentage off or something that you get if you purchase the codes or purchase the tickets early. Um, I want to say it's like 10% off or something like that. And then you can use uh, code Nixon if you like, and you'll get that percentage off. That's something that Bob has been putting on. And that's just a way, I think, for one, for them to pre-sell tickets. Um, you also get them a little bit cheaper, and then it also kind of gauges the attendance prior to the show. And it would be really nice for this one to take off because I think if this one takes off and it does really well, then he's gonna be putting on other shows like in the spring and stuff like that, and potentially like other locations maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but I think it really has a lot of potential to do very well. You have so many of these like little flea market type shows that are going around, and it's, it doesn't do anything good for the breeders or the customers for that matter. The only people that it really helps out is all these show promoters. Here in Maryland, you have like so many shows and they're on like the same weekend, the same day, like two hours apart from each other. Funny though, because the, uh, what is it? I don't even remember is the competitor that's down in that area. But as far as I know, they put on basically a bunch of trash shows. Nobody does very well because they have too many shows too frequently, whatever. Either way, the, what we really need is we need more quality shows that are spaced out reasonably to allow there to be excitement for going to those shows. And that also puts a little bit of fire under people as far as like, hey, maybe you make this purchase or maybe you pick up this animal because you never know if it's gonna be available. Around here, we would literally vend a show and then they would be like, oh, are you gonna be at this show like next week? Like, no, we're not gonna be at that show next week. Like there's no like sense of urgency at some of these shows and it's, I don't know, too much of a tangent, too much rambling onto the next topic which is the clutches that we have recently hatched out. So if you're on Instagram, you had seen my clutch or my cutting video recently of the berm clutch, which was like gross. A lot of stuff just didn't develop, died like halfway through. It was pretty rough. We ended up at the end of it having four good babies out of like a total of like 36 eggs. 15 eggs went bad like initially or so roundabouts. We ended up with 15 good eggs that looked good with veins a lot of those went bad during incubation. We ended up cutting and it wasn't great after. There were some that had kinks, some that just like, I had a few that ended up just crawling out and died shortly after the world was too hard. So they just said, screw it, I'm out. Um, so we have four good babies. One of them has a little bit of like a kink in it, not like a major kink, but like just to like, it ripples a little bit. So it's like a little weird. Um, that animal I will probably just be giving to somebody. So if anybody's interested in a green granite berm of I don't know what sex, um, I can shoot pictures of him and stuff. He's gonna be the fourth one in the video that I'm putting over this like talk. So it's like barely even noticeable. 
and they're all bastards. So I'm still going to be uh, working on those soon after I get them their first meals. I'm going to try and interact with them and, and you know, kind of tame them down because I was not aware that baby berms come out just complete bastards and have no desire to deal with you whatsoever. And it's such a shocker because like berms in general are super chill. Like I really enjoy how relaxed they are, how easy they are to handle, how sure of themselves they are. Um, I guess that comes with a little bit of age and handling. All of the berms that I've gotten, they've all been super chill. And I think that's because the people that produce them put a lot of effort into handling them when they were younger. So unfortunately, I'm going to be taking a lot of, a lot of bites to, uh, to help solve that problem for whoever ends up picking these animals up. And they're all beautiful, too. Um, we also recently had a clutch from a blackhead exanthic hat pied to a pinstripe pied. Um, I found out through the babies that she was also pastel, which I didn't really expect. Um, so there's that. But we ended up only with one blackhead pied that's het for exanthic and a lot of blackheads. I want to say everything in the clutch was blackhead. He was not a super, um, but you have some really, really good examples of blackhead. So I'm really looking forward to those. I can't remember what the sex odds were on there, but I feel like they were fairly reasonable. Um, so we ended up with a lot of blackheads that are all double het for exanthic pied and then the one pastel blackhead pied that's het for exanthic and that one's a female. I am debating if I want to keep her or not. I'm not really sure because I do have a blackhead exanthic hat pied female also growing up so it's a little unnecessary for me to also keep her. Um, but we'll see. You know, I'll figure it out. Now, another clutch we had recently was uh, double het desert ghost puzzles. Um, and that was from a super pastel puzzle bred to our desert ghost female. And we ended up pretty decent odds. We ended up with a 4.4, so four males, four females. Um, I'm not going to be holding any of those back. I have a clutch from another female later in the season that should be producing some triple het um, DG exanthic puzzles. So I'm really looking forward to that. And Maybe I'll keep some from that, I don't know, but all of these are going to be um, available once they've shed and eaten all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, they're really pretty. I mean, they're just as pretty as a pastel is, and if you've seen our last video, you know, I think puzzle is one of those animals that pastel does really good in. And um, side note there on the pastel stuff, I was corrected by a couple of people and they mentioned about like pastels and, you know, monsoon. And I think what I was confusing was, is pastel Mojave monsoons wash out. Um, I've since seen a couple of examples and I don't want to like share them here because I didn't get the, you know, the go ahead to like share them because they were sent in like private messages and whatever. Um, but I believe it was a pastel leopard uh, monsoon and um, it looked really nice. It actually, it actually looked great. Um, I wouldn't say that it would be like my first choice, you know, obviously. But it was a really beautiful animal, so it definitely changed my opinion on it being, like, terrible for the project to, like, one of those ones that's, like, a case-by-case -case situation. And I think it looked good. It didn't really, like, affect, like, the head pattern or anything like that. It kept really good contrast, and it was nice and bright. So, overall, like, I think it's not, like, the worst direction um, for that project. So, I don't know. There's that. And, um... So last thing on the projects, my next eggs that are due to hatch aren't until like towards the end of August. And that's gonna be from a uh, hypo puzzle male bred to a GHI Mojave double head hypo puzzle female. Um, that's probably one of the clutches that I'm most excited for this season because I would really, really like to make some GHI um, hypo Mojave, hypo Mojave, GHI hypo puzzle. And I think that those, I mean, one, they just look phenomenal, right? The GHI puzzles look great. Throwing hypo in it can only make it better. I don't really care if Mojave hits. I would actually prefer to hit one without Mojave. So that way it allows like versatility with some other stuff. But, you know, if I hit anything close to like that, you know, with Mojave, like that's fine. But that's probably one of my most anticipated clutches. So I'm really, really hoping for some good success with that. And uh, last thing. There's a video coming up that I'm working on. I put a post out on Instagram a while back, um, not too long ago, like a couple weeks ago or something. And um, I was basically just trying to get some feelers as far as if people want me to make a video on how I make my videos, kind of what I think is like the best process for those videos. 
and I would like a little bit of feedback here on YouTube as well because, you know, potentially you guys have watched other videos of mine and maybe you're trying to figure out where you want to get started within your YouTube video making, you know, situation. And, um, you know, I guess I just want a little bit of feedback, what kind of information you would like to get. I plan on splitting it up into like a two-part thing. So part one is basically just going to be, you know, topics, which I think is probably the most important thing. Um, outside of the topics, it's obviously going to be like gear, different things you can use for those videos, why I think certain things are better than others, like a want versus need kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, I guess just, um, just that, you know, it's, it's mostly going to be about the, the how, the what to use, I guess the why to do it. Um, that's going to be more of like the part two, which is like why it's important to do that. I'll touch upon a little bit in the first one, but why it's important to do like YouTube stuff. And then like the second one is mostly going to be like just a, probably a quickish rant on like why or what I guess the differences are is in the terms of like YouTube versus Instagram and which one I think is more beneficial. Um, that's it though. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully you found something in here helpful or entertaining or whatever. Um, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see in that video about making videos and any other topics or whatever else that you specifically want to hear, I guess, my thoughts on. You know, that's it. Thanks for checking out the video. See you in the next one.